Harriet the Spy, Chapter 3. She was particularly excited as she ran along because today she was adding a new spying place to her route. She had discovered a way into a private house around the corner. Private houses were much more difficult to get into than apartment buildings. And this was the first one Harriet had managed. It belonged to a Miss Agatha Kay, Plummer, who was very strange, rather theatrical lady who had once married a man of considerable means. She was now divorced, lived alone, and apparently talked on his telephone all day. Harriet had found this much out from first listening to several conversations between Miss Plummer's maid and an overly friendly garbage man. Harriet had pretended to play ball while the garbage was being picked up. Just yesterday, she had discovered that by timing it exactly, she had just enough time to jump into the dump waiter Inside the door closed before the maid completed one of her frequent trips up and down the stairs. The dumb waiter was no longer used, but unfortunately had not been boarded up yet. Since there was a small crack in the door, Harriet could see and hear perfectly. She approached the house, looking through the kitchen windows, and saw the maid preparing a tray. She knew then that the next step would be to take the tray to the second floor, not a moment to lose. The maid went into the pantry, Harriet stepped through the kitchen door, and in one jump was when the dumb waiter. She barely got the door slid down again before the maid was back in the room. The maid was humming, Miss America, look at her, Miss America, in a tuneless sort of way. Then the tray was ready. The maid picked it up and left the room. Simultaneously, Harriet started pulling on the ropes that hoisted the dumb waiter. Terrified, she was heard a lot of creaking. This would never do. Maybe she could bring some oil. She arrived at the second floor. Her heart was beating so fast she was almost unable to breathe. She looked through the crack. The first thing she saw was a huge four-poster bed, in the middle of which Miss Plummer sat, propped against men's pillows, telephone in hand, surrounded by magazines, books, candy boxes, and a litter of pink baby pillows. Well, Miss Plummer was saying decisively into the phone, I've discovered the secret of life. Wow, thought Harriet, my dear, it's very simple. You just take to your bed, you just refuse to leave it for anything or anybody. Some secret through Harriet. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Harriet hated bed anyway. In and out was her motto. In the less time there, the better. Oh yes, darling, I know. I know you can't run away from life. I agree with you. I loathe people that do that. But you see, I'm not. While I'm laying here, I'm actually working because you see, and this is the divine part, I'm deciding on a profession. You must be a hundred and two, thought Harriet. You better get going. The maid came in with the tray. Put it down there, said Miss Plummer, rather crossly, and went back to the phone. Harriet wrote in her note. It's just what old golly says. Rich people are boring. She says when people don't do anything, they think anything. And when they don't think anything, there's nothing to think about them. If I had a dumb waiter, I would look in it all the time to see if anybody was in it as though she were reading Harriet's mind, Miss Palmer said to the maid. Did you hear a creak just now in that old dumbwaiter? No, ma'am, said the maid. It was probably my imagination. She went back to the telephone. My dear, I have infinite possibilities. Now, don't you think I would make a marvelous actress? Oh, there's painting. I could paint. What do you think of that? Well, darling, I'm only 40. Harriet started very slowly heart pounding, to pull the ropes that would stir her downward. It had occurred to her that she'd better exit while Miss Plummer was blathering away, or she would certainly be heard. There was a tiny creak as she got near the bottom, but she was fairly certain no one heard it. There, the main floor. She peeked into the kitchen, empty. Could she make it? She scrambled down and ran for her life. I have never ran so fast, she thought, as she, cur as she cornered around. Panting, she sat on some steps and took out her book. I think this might be too dangerous an assignment, but I would like to think, but I would like to know what job she takes. But how can she work lying down? How does she pay for anything just lying there? I guess she just lives on her husband's money. Does my mother mooch off my father? I'll never do that. Look at her. poor sport. He has too much to do already without me lying up in the bed all day eating. Harriet had three more stops before she was finished for the day. But before she counted, she decided to stop by and see sport. On the way, she got thirsty and stopped in her favorite 
lunch for an egg cream. It was her favorite because there that she had first begun to hear what peculiar things say, what people say to each other. She liked to sit at the counter with her egg cream and let the voices from the tables behind her float over her head. Several conversations were always going on at once. Sometimes she would play a game and not look at the people until from listening to them, she had decided what they had looked like. Then she would turn around and see if she was right. A chocolate egg cream, please. Certainly, Harriet, how are you? Okay, Harriet sat down, pleased that she was known. She put her 12 cents down and sipped away as she listened. My father is a brat. So I have to admit, I handled that case in a perfect way, a really perfect way. I said to the judge, he's a brat because he thinks he's perfect. Listen, Jane, we have to go to Orchard Street and get that material. I can't live with that house one more minute without shades. Anyone could see him. Harriet had to restrain herself at this point from looking around at anyone, possibly for the spy route, if anyone could see in. You know I've lost very few cases in my time, even if I do say so. He's such a rat. He never lets my mother open her trap. Rat trap? Thought Harriet. You have no idea what it's like to hide all the time. Jeez, I can't even walk around in a slip. Her eye cream finished. Harriet summed up her guesses. The boy with the rat father would be skinny, have black hair, and lots of pimples. The lawyer who won all the cases would be short, puffy looking, and leaning forward. She got no picture of the shadeless girl, but decided that she must be fat. She turned around. At first she could tell. Then she saw the boy with black hair and pimples. She felt a surge of triumph. She looked at what must be the lawyer, one of the two men. Then she listened to see if he were the one. No, the other one was the lawyer. He wasn't short and fat. He was long and thin with a handsome face. She consoled herself with a faint puffiness. He had around with the eyes. Well, no wonder she won't walk around in a slip, Harriet thought. Looking at the girl with no shades, she's the fattest thing I ever saw. Enough. Only two out of the three. Some days were better off than others. She slid off the stool and went on her way to Sport's house. Sport lived in an apartment that was up four flights of stairs. She opened the door, wearing an apron and carrying a dish towel. Hi, Harriet, come in. I just got to do these dishes. Then what you gonna do? Then I sweep. Oh, Sport, you got too much work to do. Yeah, but what can I do? Somebody's got to do it. Once I didn't do it, and after a week, I couldn't find the living room. They went to the kitchen, and Sport continued to do the dishes. Harriet pointed a clo pointed to a closed door to the right of the kitchen. Is he in there? Yeah, he worked all night, so he's sleeping. I gotta go to the store and then get back in time to fix his dinner. I couldn't even fix dinner, much less for my father. How do you do it? Well, lots of times, you know. It's Eggsville. Doesn't he care what he eats? Writers don't care what they eat. They just care what you think of them. Here, Harriet, hold this. I sure care what I eat. Just as she was saying this, Harriet heard a loud groan from the bathroom. She almost dropped the plate. Hey, what's that? Sport looked totally concerned. Unconcerned. Nothing, just a bad dream. He has them all the time. Writers have a lot of bad dreams. Don't you want to be a writer, Sport? Gee, your father couldn't even help you. Sport almost collapsed at the sink. Are you kidding? You know I want to be a ball player. And if I'm not a good ball player, I'll tell you something. I'm going to be a CPA. What's that? You don't know what a CPA is? Sport screeched. No, said Harriet. She never minded admitting. She didn't know anything. So what, she thought. I could always learn. Well, I'll show you what that is. Come with me. Sport put the dish towel down, took Harriet by the hand, and led her into his room. You would have known it was Sport's room because it was as neat as a pin. There was a little cot, made up army fashion, one straight chair, and a little desk. The desk was absolutely bare. Sport took a ring of keys out of his pocket and started unlocking the drawers of the desk. You see these books? These are books. He stepped away back proudly. Harriet looked. Each drawer was filled with large ledgers. One drawer held a cash box, which was also locked. My, my, she said, because she didn't know what else to say. A CPA is an accountant. For your information, Sport said pompously pulling back Harriet's hand sharply because she had started to reach for one of the ledgers. What's in all those? asked Harriet, suspecting that they were empty. Our finances. What do you think? Sport was getting irritated. I hate money, Harriet said. Well, you jolly well like it if you didn't have any, Sport said arrogantly. Harriet considered this. It was true. She never had to think about it. Well, gee, Sport, do you like to do that? Isn't that just a lot of math? Well, the math isn't hard. That's not it. I can't explain. Don't you know what I mean? Then you know where everything is. Oh, said Harriet. 
who did not understand at all. I mean, see, my father gets a check, and if I don't take it, then the next day it's gone. And he just throws up his hands and goes in my room and shuts the door. Then we don't eat. Really? Really? This way, I take the check and I cash it and plan what to do with all the money piece by piece, and then we have enough to eat. See? Yeah, that's very sensible. Well, I don't know. What would have happened to us if I didn't start doing that? Yeah, gee, I never knew about this. Sport kind of kicked a foot around on the floor. Then they both felt embarrassed. So Sport went back into the kitchen and hurried into the living room. Seized the opportunity to try to see through the keyhole into Sport's father's room. She saw nothing but an old gym. Gym sock laying on the floor. Sport came into the living room and Harriet jumped back and said quickly, Well, I gotta get back to my spy route. I'll see you tomorrow.